Hello, my name's John Goff. I'm teaching here at the RNCM. This is my pupil, Ted. Um, we're talking today about teaching finger staccato when particularly applied to scales. Let's have a scale, Ted. Third apart, let's have B major. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty clear, is that? If I were to say to you, let's have it a bit quicker, what would happen? Yes, quite. When we want a bit of speed, you've got to use a very short, sharp, quick finger action. And we have talked about this, haven't we? About bringing the finger in very much to the palm of the hand so it contracts in using the muscles of the inside of the finger as opposed to the fingers, the muscles which normally lift the finger. It's akin to pizzicato. You play the double bass, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So it's the equivalent of fingers um, plucking pizzicato. Yeah. Can we try it in slow motion? So we can see how quickly those fingers work in. sort of staccato. Quite often I see staccato scales done. When would I use that sort of action, do you think? Can you not Yeah. So it's more uh, useful for double note. Play me a scale in octave and show me the difference. Yeah. Is that actually coming from the wrist though, or are you now using forearm? Oh, for... Yeah. So see if you can Isolate from the wrist. That's why it relaxes the eyes. So I'm putting your third finger and your thumb together. Yeah. And isolating it that way. Quite often find when I'm teaching youngsters, which was a long time ago in my case, not in yours, um, it was very difficult to isolate from the wrist. Yeah. You know, people want to use the forearm. That's a big unit, that's going to produce a lot of power. The finger staccato we've just talked about. It's a small unit, so it's the quickest. It's not going to produce the most power, but it will produce the most speed. Yeah. So, coming back to the use of the hand, uh, which we're going to use as octaves, all you could do is six, same um, idea of double notes. You're going to try and isolate it from the wrist. Let's just try a few on each note. Say a few on each. Let's say. And what you can try, again, if you, if you want to test this, try holding the wrist in the other hand. And you can see very much that that's coming from. So we're going to use that more for a double um, note technique. Let's just try the octave scale again. See if you can uh, isolate from the wrist. That's not bad at all. The easiest way to start with is several on each note. By staying stationary you can check the action up and down, you're not moving from side to side. Just try that. Yes, yeah. Let's have eight on the next one as well. That's it. Do you notice you're freeing up a lot more now? Yeah. Yes. I mean the other way to do it then is as in the Schubert Earl King. <laughs> Keep going. This is good. Um, we're going into the advanced repertoire here, aren't we, with Earl King? But to keep that going, what I can then start to introduce is a rising and falling wrist. Yeah. Um, you're not probably going to meet the Earl King Schubert song for a while, but see what I'm doing. I'm rising and falling. Experiment, see how you get on with that. Just take it quite slowly and see how it goes. It's quite strenuous to, to keep playing like that, and the muscles can start to tighten up. 
So by keeping the wrist rising and falling, you're actually re relaxing the muscles there. So there's less chance of sort of cramp and tension and all these things we don't want in there. So if you're moving that up and down within the... You, you can keep the stamina up. You can keep there for much longer.